So, let's talk about Sword Art Online. Despite becoming one of the most popular anime in the last decade, Sword Art Online has earned quite the reputation for being that one anime that everyone loves to shit on. From blog posts to forum discussions, even here on YouTube with people breaking down why the anime sucks, analysing its openings, discussing how it became so popular, heck I've talked about it twice on my channel. Now personally, I actually like Sword Art Online despite it having problems, and I mean a lot of problems. But I and many others have stated that the worst thing about this anime, aside from the obvious, is the amount of squandered potential it had, since there is a lot to like about this anime and it could have easily been great, but sadly it's let down by not fulfilling all that potential and ending up becoming what it is. But then I thought to myself, what if Sword Art Online lived up to all that potential? What if all the popularity it's gained was backed up by the quality of the series? What if Sword Art Online was great? And seeing how many people liked my How To Improve Fire Emblem Fates video, I've decided to take a crack at everyone's favourite wish fulfillment anime. So join me everyone, as it's time to log in, gear up and ready both your skills and your sword, as I present my own take on how to improve Sword Art Online. Please note that this video is purely opinion based and I'm simply outlining how I would improve this anime as a whole, so I'll be looking at various aspects which I feel would work best from my perspective. Keep in mind, I'm not changing the core story or premise of this anime, just outlining areas of improvement. Also, I'm not making any connection to the light novel, just the anime. It is an adaptation after all. On that note, I'm only looking at the first season of Sword Art Online, not season 2 or the Ordinal Scale movie, and just like the last time I did this, I'm not a script writer, distinguished author, or anything like that. I'm just a guy giving his take on how to make this series better. So please don't flip your shit if I miss out something or don't go as in-depth as others do. And just to clarify, I'm not doing this because I hate Sword Art Online. I like this series and I think there's a lot of positive to it. I'm just expressing how I would like to see this franchise better itself, so don't take this as me shitting all over Sword Art Online. There's plenty more people who have that base covered. And yes, I will be spoiling this plot, so be warned. Anyway, with that said, let us begin. Step 1, one arc only. For those who haven't seen Sword Art Online, the first season is split up into two arcs, Aincrad and Alfheim. Each arc takes up about 12 to 13 episodes, and right off the bat you can start to see where the problem lies. Due to the short length of each arc, the story ends up feeling rushed and not very fleshed out, so the series feels very condensed and fast paced, often not delving deep enough into various aspects like the characters, various plot points, world building, the themes of the series, and so on. In this case, I feel Sword Art Online should be focused on one arc rather than two, and it's pretty much unanimous that Ironcrad is way better than Alfheim. The story of Ironcrad is what hooks people on the series and is far more interesting than anything in Alfheim, since there's a real sense of danger and drama in this series, and it's just overall better thought out, better written, has a better premise, better characters, and is simply better as a whole. Alfheim is what many consider to be the low point in this series, and it has stopped people from watching the anime altogether. And I can get where they're coming from, since it's mostly boring and ultimately doesn't amount to much in the grand scheme of things. Granted, it does have its moments, but overall, comparing Alfheim to Ironcrad is like comparing the second half of Death Note to the first. There's just no competition really. With Alfheim out of the way, the anime has enough time to flush out everything in Ironcrad, and I think that's something everyone can get down with. Step 2. Forget the filler. Despite being split into two arcs totaling in 25 episodes, Sword Art Online has a nasty habit of what I consider filler episodes peppered throughout the series. You probably know what I'm talking about, but for those who don't, I'm referring to episodes like the fishing episode, the murder mystery episode, laughing coffin, the majority of Alfheim, and stuff like that. I found that these episodes really didn't add anything and felt rather unnecessary, and when you've only got 25 episodes to tell a coherent story, the last thing you want is episodes that go nowhere. And while you could argue Laughing Coffin is relevant in regards to Sword Art 2, that's fair enough, but in my opinion that entire story arc was stupid to begin with. For a series like Sword Art, it doesn't need filler. What it needs are episodes that focus on either advancing the story, establishing its world and setting, and fleshing out the characters. Something that is heavily criticised about the series as a whole since it doesn't do this very well, and seeing how in this scenario the series only has one arc to focus on, it has enough time to achieve all of this and shouldn't feel the need to drag things out with filler episodes. This isn't a 400 episode shonen after all, so cut the crap and get to the point. We don't need stories about how to fish in a video game, we've already got an abundance of those to begin with. Step 3. This game sucks. Something quite a few people have pointed out about Sword Art Online is that despite the idea of living inside a video game being awesome, the actual Sword Art Online video game sucks. 
Honestly, it's about as bare bones as an MMORPG goes, since when you really look at the game as a whole, it's so shallow and is missing some of the most basic features of any MMORPG. For example, there's not much of an actual class system, so pretty much everyone is just a mercenary with a different weapon, there's no magic or any type of mage classes in the game, the fighting lacks any sort of strategy, variation or real skill, there aren't any different races for players to choose from, and the game can be broken beyond belief. I mean, just look at this shit! Granted, you could argue that for the first type of fully VR game, you want to take baby steps to not make something too complex, but even this is pushing it. To remedy this, Sword Art Online needs to take inspiration from other anime of this genre, in particular Log Horizon and the Alfheim arc. Ugh, I never thought I'd say something like that. In Alfheim, there are a lot more races to choose from and they each have their own unique skills and attributes, along with implementing magic and flying into the game, so already it's a more exciting video game that has more depth to it. Lock Horizon is another great example, as it does all this and more, along with taking into account how the game's mechanics can limit the players on what they can do, but also having them find ways to alter and manipulate the rules of the game, as well as how each race and class is unique and varied. The anime focuses heavily on world building and how the characters have to live by the rules of the game. The best example of this is during its action scenes, where the anime takes full advantage of the scenario and incorporates different attacks, skills and class attributes into the battles, encouraging players to form strategies and give each character a specific job to do, making the battles play out like an actual video game. If you apply this logic to Sword Art, it will make the series much more interesting and better portray the idea of living inside a video game. We can see how each character is affected by what is possible within the limits of the game, along with getting rid of the idea of Kirito being able to take down the bosses by himself, since while the fight scenes are very flashy and beautifully animated, it often boils down to Kirito soloing the boss because, of course, he's the main character. I mean look at this, this isn't fucking Dynasty Warriors. If the game is built around being an actual, well, game, and encourages players to work as a team and form parties, each character would be featured much more often as they would have a specific job to do and a unique set of skills specific to them, resulting in the fight scenes being more about how the players form strategies to conquer the dungeons and defeat the bosses. In fact, because there's a risk of death if players lose, they would really have to think these things through and take no chances, and that could result in some really tense and well executed fight scenes. It certainly beats seeing the cast just swing swords back and forth until the boss says, Fuck this, I've had enough. Step 4. Delve Deeper So as I've mentioned before, Sword Art Online doesn't really explore the themes and ideas of the narrative enough, and ultimately ends up feeling rather shallow in my opinion, since it will go out of its way to mention them, and certainly raise some good points, but not really do much after that and leave the audience feeling underwhelmed to say the least. With a series like Sword Art, you've got a shit ton of creative and informative material to work with, so the series should take advantage of that and focus its attention on fleshing out the concepts and ideologies present within its narrative, something the second season and movie did rather well actually. The main theme the series has going for it is the idea of living inside a video game and how dying within the game results in real death, as well as how the video game world blurs the lines between fantasy and reality. While there's a lot more to explore than just this, these themes are the central focus of the series and there's already a lot to work with. In this case, the series can delve deeper into how the fear and paranoia of death affects people in both the long and short term, as well as what it does to players who intentionally or unintentionally commit murder. When it comes to blowing the lines between fantasy and reality, this should be an underlying theme that evolves as the series goes on, showing how as time passes, the characters begin to become more accustomed to this world and even begin to question and forget the need to want to complete the game and return to the real world, plus other aspects like having a connection to something fictional, using the game's mechanics to make tasks easier, being able to have the players live out their dreams and fantasies, meeting other players and forming relationships you never could in real life, raising a virtual family and so on. There are many other ideas to be explored, but the point I'm trying to make is that this anime has a fantastic premise and a lot that can be done with it, so it really needs to explore these concepts rather than just glance over them. It's as they say, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade, and when an anime has a premise like this, you make something good out of it. It's not impossible, I'll tell you that much. Step 5. Kirito Now we come to what is easily the most despised and flawed part of the series, Kirito. Why is he so flawed you ask? Well the answer is simple, he isn't. Kirito is pretty much the textbook definition of a vanilla protagonist or Gary Stu if you will, since throughout the series he's the one who solves all the problems, is overpowered to the point in which he can beat this game in his sleep, and is able to have women fawn all over him as if he were straight out of Auron, despite the fact that he's staler than a piece of bread and goes through next to no character development throughout the entire series. All of it. I guess stale bread is what's hot these days. Now I understand why this is done, since it's meant to be a blank slate for the viewer to insert themselves, and to be honest, who wouldn't want to be a black attire wearing dual swordsman who's a literal chick magnet, but as a result, the character and the narrative suffer due to him not evolving or changing despite all that happens, and if the main character doesn't evolve, the story can't evolve. 
The worst part about all this is that for the first three episodes, Kirito actually did have a personality. He was slightly cocky and a bit full of himself, but for the most part he distanced himself from others and was a cold and antisocial person that had trouble making friends in the real world, but they abandoned all that after episode 3, despite Kirito essentially having a mental breakdown. In my eyes, Kirito should be written in a way that follows through on what was established at the beginning, but eventually it begins to open up to others and grow into a better person while living inside Sword Art Online. Here's how I would write Kirito if Sword Art Online was how I described throughout this video. <clears throat> After the events with the moonlit black cat, Kirito has become a purely solo player and wants to distance himself from as many people as possible so that he doesn't go through all that pain again, even though Klein and Asuna repeatedly try to convince him to join up with them since they know that he has the talents of a great player. Eventually, Kirito tries to solo a dungeon by himself, but ends up almost getting killed as a result, just barely making out alive, and at this point, Kirito is in a very low place and scared of going any further in the game or getting close to anyone. At this point, Kirito starts to become depressed, secludes himself and only occasionally goes outside, and eventually he runs into Silica who he saves and finds out that she needs help getting Pina back. Reluctant at first, Kirito decides to help her in the end, and after seeing how much Pina means to Silica, getting to know her better as well as the adventure they have, he slowly but surely starts to enjoy more of life in Sword Art Online and see how the game has a positive effect on players. This continues when he meets other characters like Lisbeth, along with spending more time with Agil and Klein, and as a result he becomes a friendlier and warmer person. By doing this, we can see Kirito change over time and how he overcomes his fear and indifference and is able to keep moving forward to beat the game, and by doing so he's able to use his skills and knowledge of the game for others' benefit, not just his own, making him more at home in the virtual world than in the real one, as he feels like he's actually making a difference and being useful. Step 6. Party Members if there's one aspect of Solar Online that I feel needed much more attention, it was the supporting cast. Honest to god, despite being criminally underused, I actually like the supporting cast of Solar Online. They're very colourful characters, much more interesting than Kirito, and the episodes focus on them make for some of the best in the series. Well that now we have a full 25 episodes to flesh out a single story arc and have no pointless filler, this is where they get their time to shine. Aside from the obvious of fleshing out these characters' personalities and backstories, this could be a great opportunity for the anime to explore more concepts that relate to each of these characters, ultimately making them and the story as a whole much more interesting and complex. For example, it could explore the idea of Lisbeth discovering where her talents lie and being able to realise or achieve her life goals in this world, how Silica is able to form such a strong bond with a fictional creature and how it mirrors her relationships in the real world, how Klein is able to live out his fantasy of being the person he never could in real life and so on. This would make for some great material that could add the extra layer of depth to the series by seeing how all these characters have changed and evolved throughout their time in Sword Art Online. Plus, if the game's mechanics are more prominent and crucial this time around, it would make more sense for these characters to be present more often in order for Kirito to make it through Ironcrad. Heck, I wouldn't be surprised if they formed their own party just like in the second season. It just makes sense that way. And of course, there's the two biggest supporting characters that really needed the extra screen time, Asuna and Yui. Asuna is one of the few characters to me that actually feels three-dimensional, since she starts strong, got screwed over in many ways during the second half, but thankfully bounced back in the second season and became arguably the best character in the series. Arguably. So with this in mind, there's already a lot to work with, and I feel for the Ironcrad arc, the focus should initially be on Asuna trying her hardest to get out of this game, being one of the best players and part of the strongest skills, as well as being the one who tries her hardest to get Kirito and others in on the fight because of their skills making her rather cold and solely focused on beating the game. However, over time, Kirito shows Asuna all the benefits of virtual reality since he was just as cold as she was once, and she also begins to loosen up and enjoy life in Sword Art Online much more, as well as starting to contemplate whether or not she wants to go back due to all her family issues. From there, the two act as a way to balance each other out, Asuna being the one to motivate Kirito to join the fight, and Kirito being the one to help Asuna enjoy the life they have and take things easy. This way, we can see how over time these two naturally fall in love, rather than it boiling down to this essentially. Hey there! Hi. So, do you want to get married? You do realise we've only just met and have next to nothing in common? I know, but do you want to? Sure. And finally, there's the case of Yui. Okay, for those who don't know, Yui is my absolute favourite character in Sword Art Online. I'll admit she's not the best character in the series, but I love her to pieces and she's one of the main reasons I don't mind Alfheim too much. With that said, Yui is meant to play a huge part in the first arc and be one of the biggest plot points in Ironcrad. The only problem is, she's only in two episodes, giving next to no time to form a proper connection and flesh out Yui's character, as well as what she's meant to represent and signify. 
In this case, I feel Yuri should join around the middle of the series, roughly episode 14 or 15, so that at that point Kirito and Asuna's relationship has been properly established. From there, Yuri should pretty much act how she normally would, thinking she's their daughter and all, as well as being a catalyst to strengthen Kirito and Asuna's relationship by making them all feel like a real family. Adding to that, her identity is something that should be slowly hinted at throughout the remaining episodes and then finally revealed when the time is right. Stuff like Yui accidentally getting cut off from Kirito and Asuna in a dungeon, yet she turns up completely unscathed later on, or having a strange talent for understanding and exploiting the game's mechanics without any prior knowledge or training. Little things like that would add to the mystery and make Yui a much more interesting character, and then when the truth is out, the impact will be much stronger on both the characters and the audience. Which brings me to my last point. And finally, step 7, the ending. Okay, this one is more of a personal thing, since I think SAO ended just fine. Not amazing, not terrible, just fine. It was sweet and it wrapped things up nicely. However, the idea I have in mind could make for a very powerful and very emotional ending. It's not a happy ending, I'll tell you right now. So if you don't want to listen to me potentially rip your heart out, that's fine, you can stop right here. But for everyone else, here's how it would go down. <clears throat> so we're approaching the last five to six episodes of the series. Kirito and Asuna have cleared another dungeon and the game is nearly complete. Back home they talk about the battle they just had and the idea of getting back to the real world, at which point Yui says, Yay! I can't wait to go back to Japan with Mommy and Daddy. I wonder what our new home's going to be like. This is when the penny drops, as Kirito and Asuna both realise, once the game is complete, they can never live like this again. For all they know, Yui is just another player who logged in and has a family of her own. She's not their real daughter. In fact, they don't truly know what she is at this point. This is where Kirito and Asuna begin to discuss where they're going to go from here. As far as Kirito is concerned, this current life is the best thing he's ever had. In Ironcrad, he feels like he's worth something, and if he goes back to the real world, he'll go back to being nothing again. Asuna is more split on the decision, since from the very start she was determined to get out of this game, and still does. But after spending more time in SAO, Yui and Kirito now being a part of her life, as well as contemplating how this will affect her future, she doesn't really know what to do. Because of all this doubt in their minds, they begin to lose focus on the preceding boss fight, and because the bosses are now so much harder, more players get killed as a result, including some of their friends, adding to the inner turmoil and making them both very sceptical of reaching the end. Eventually, this leads to the part where Yui discovers who she is and explains it to Kirito and Asuna, at which point she fades away and dies. Not get stored in a deus ex machina, straight up dies, telling them that she wishes she could be with them forever before departing. This act is a huge blow to both of them, making them question if it will all be worth it in the end if they end up losing everyone in the process and have serious doubts about their situation. Eventually, through much hardship and more losses, they reach the end and Kirito discovers that Heathcliff is Akihiko Kayaba. Kayaba! Shut up! A one-on-one -on -one duel in Souls, and despite his best efforts, Kirito is not strong enough to beat him, but right before the final blow is struck, Asuna jumps in the way and gives her life to save Kirito. And in the split second that she disappears, he finds it in himself to thrust his sword into Heathcliff, winning the battle and with that, SAO is finally cleared. When he wakes up, he hurries as fast as he can to where Asuna is being held, hoping, praying that the nerve gear didn't activate in time. But once he arrives, it's already too late. As Asuna lies there, her heart rate completely flat, forever gone from his life. As the series draws to a close, the surviving players held Kirito as a hero and a saviour, being the one who ultimately beat the game and set them free, and he is known the world over as the one who liberated the prisoners of Sword Art Online. However, this means nothing to him. He may have saved thousands of people and be a hero in the eyes of the public, but he did this at the cost of his friends, his daughter, and the woman he loved, as the two years he spent in the virtual world were more meaningful and genuine than his whole life in the real one. And that's how I would go about improving Sword Art Online. Sorry if the ending was slightly depressing, but I felt it would make for something very powerful and emotional. I hope you all enjoyed this video and feel free to tell me your thoughts. Did you agree with me? Did you disagree with me? Is there something I missed? And how would you go about improving Sword Art Online? Let me know in the comments below. And let me know if you would like to see me try and improve other anime or video games, because I've already got ideas of how to improve Akame Gar Kill, Fire Emblem Awakening, Metro Lover M, Guilty Crown, and so on. I'd also like to say a special thank you to Shizuka Ni and X Rashira for providing the voice of Yui and Asuna in this video. Thank you both so much for making this video possible, you did a fantastic job, and I've included links to their Twitter pages and YouTube accounts in the description, so be sure to check them out, please. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel as well. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Blazes9 and also follow me on Amino as well. Anyway, that's it from me, I'll see you all next time.